So I wanted to do a little how-to on my holographic visor. It looks cool, very versatile effect. The glow is much more pronounced on one side than the other, so it's easy to see out of. It's also surprisingly inexpensive and straightforward to do. For supplies, you'll need acrylic or polycarbonate, aka Lexan, sheet. The sheets I used are 093 thick, which is thick enough to have a body but still workable. Acrylic is much easier to work with and has a brighter glow effect, while polycarb is used for bulletproof glass. Much harder to work with, but it won't shatter. More on that later. For this video, I'm using polycarb, mostly because of my lifestyle choices. You'll want LEDs of your choice, as well as the wires, resistors, soldering stuff, etc. A link in the description to some really cool compact lights I've found. They're much easier to work with than what I'm using here. You'll also want a heat gun and some good sturdy gloves for forming, as well as a Dremel with an abrasive cutting wheel and engraving bits. You don't want to use a saw or shear cutters because it won't end well. Along with the Dremel, you're going to want safety glasses and some sort of dust mask because you'll get a lot of plastic particles in the air and possibly shrapnel. You'll also want to have on hand some pieces of foam, uh, sharpies, masking tape, wire cutters, and a knife. These will just make it easier to work certain items. So the first thing I'm doing here is putting the visor template on the piece of glass. Uh, I want to make sure that I have the overall profile, just the space that it's going to take up. So the, you'll, you'll want to cut out a full rectangle uh, for the cutting and the forming. So I'm just making sure, uh, tracing out the rectangle that the uh, the, the template will fit inside of. There we go. We're going to take the Dremel to cut out the rectangle. I've got a piece of foam underneath so I'm not cutting into the floor and to help with the noise. It's loud. It'll also take a while because you want to be pretty slow and steady. Uh, or not, maybe. I don't really know what I'm doing. I've had the most success with treating it sort of like a miniature table saw. I will take the Dremel and sort of sink it through one end of the material. Uh, then I'll push the plate through the Dremel, holding the Dremel steady. Uh, it's just a matter of taking your time and making sure that you're actually cutting entirely through. Yeah, so you guys viewing here, you get to experience this at a six times speed. But this is going to take a very long time. And this is probably the shortest step. I am sure to complain about this more as the video goes on. I know what you animals are really here to see. Oh yeah. Oh no. Let me just get that out of the way. Oh yeah. Beautiful. So now that we have the protective plastic coating off, we can trace out the entire visor template. I like to use a fine point Sharpie for this. Sharpie is good for both the tracing and the patterning because you can remove it with rubbing alcohol or hand sanitizer. So now if you're using a pattern, go ahead and slide that underneath. I've got some masking tape that I'm using to hold it down to make sure we're not sliding all over the place. Uh, and then you take whatever you're using to mark it and just draw out the pattern. This is another thing that takes absolutely forever. Yep. Just tracing out all of those lines one by one. What's fun is you can you can actually watch as the accuracy of my lines goes down as I move from one side to the other. Now that we have that pattern fully traced out, it's time to do the engraving. I've got my piece taped down to a slab of Eva foam to help with the vibrations. Basically, you're just going to take your Dremel with an engraving bit and slowly work your way across the entire piece. Generally, I try to get you know a decent amount of carving into the piece. You don't want to go too deep because that's going to affect the integrity, but you want to 
engrave in far enough that it will actually raise up the material in order to get that effect. The optical properties of this stuff is pretty cool. I could go over the physics of it, but that's not what y'all are here for. Basically, you want to engrave just deep enough to create a V groove into the material to catch the light and disperse it outwards. Every once in a while, you'll need to clean off the bit. Plastic is going to collect, and that'll affect the etching process. I use needle nose pliers to gingerly pinch and peel it off. You want to be careful and gentle about it. I broke one of my bits doing this too aggressively. You could also do this step with a laser engraver, but most of us don't have one of those lying around. Actually, that's not true. I know someone who does, but uh, he's a little bit far away. We haven't really spoken since college, so not really something I want to come out of the blue with and asking him about. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and give it a look over. Brush off all those little bits that are sticking around on top. Probably actually going to have a lot along the edges of the engraving that you'll want to wipe away with a knife. Now we're going to peel this back first. Oh yeah. Just kidding. I get stuck on those burrs along the edge. It's probably a better idea to remove the burrs before trying to peel back the very smooth coating, or else it'll be as unsatisfying for you as it was for me. This is a step I probably should have done sooner, but you take out your wire cutters or a knife to remove all of the burrs along the edge of the cut. So, might as well test out how the effect looks right now. I like to put an LED up against the side to see a little preview of what it'll look like when it's done. This is the previous visor I made, and you can see it has a lot of defects from the forming process. There's warping. You can see it didn't curve straight in a lot of places. That was a result of cutting it fully out before doing the bending. Uh, there's also bubbling in a few spots, and that's what happens when you put too much heat. Uh, not a big deal, but, you know, it's still a thing, and you can see it if you get up too close. So the next step is the actual forming of the visor. And like the rest of this, it takes a good long time to do. Important thing, you want to make sure that the engraved side is going to be on the inside. If you do this backwards, you're going to get all of the light in your face and almost none of it visible outside. I'm doing the wrong thing here at first. It doesn't really work to heat the entire piece at once. The heat will dissipate before it actually gets workable, so you can only really bend a few inches at a time. Uh, focus on one section to bend and then a few inches to either side and heat that region. You can heat maybe a third of the material at one time to get good results. One trick I'm doing here is to push the end against the counter while I'm heating. That way I can feel the material starting to give and get an idea of when it's time to go back to forming. The big benefit of forming before cutting is the flat edges along the top and bottom of the piece. These rest against the counter and the edge of whatever you're working on to keep things even along the cross section. Shaping both the top and bottom with a consistent solid shape makes it a lot easier to get a consistent curve throughout. It also helps to reduce the edges bending out as you curve the plate in. I could go over the physics on that too, but you're not here for that either. You're only really able to bend a few inches at a time. Uh, just move through iteratively from one end to the other until you've got a nice curve throughout the entire piece. The first I'm using is this large glass bowl. Now I got the profile to match as close as I can, but you can't really get it to perfectly match processing it like this due to spring back in the material. Now it is definitely going to be hot once you're done working it, so make sure to give it a few moments to cool down before you start handling it with your bare hands. So I have my previous visor here for reference, and you can see there's still a big difference in profiles. The next step is to take a smaller die and work the piece the same way as before. Again, this is a very iterative process, just trying to get this flat piece of plastic down to the profile that you need to fit in the helmet. Of 
before we go outside, we have to appreciate the bird feeder for a little bit. Let that little guy get some food. Alright, so once you think that you've got your visor close to the profile that you want, you can go ahead and cut it out from the rest of the plate. It's pretty much the exact same thing as before, and it'll be a little bit more challenging this time because it is now fully curved. Just make sure you're taking your time with this, being careful to keep the line straight and clean. You want the edges to be clear and clean, not just for the looks, but also to let as much light in as possible. Do some more deburring. Then once you've got that done, you can go ahead and clean up any lines that you may have missed during the cutting or engraving process. I've got a q-tip with some rubbing alcohol and that just wipes the sharpie lines away. Go ahead and take this, put it in the helmet, see how it fits. Now in this case here, it's really smooth, but it does not fit along the profile where I want it to. So you just take note of where it needs to be bent and you bring it back to do more of the same. After a few iterations, you'll get the profile to where you want it to be. In this case, you want the edges of the visor to be sitting about flush with the surrounding foam. Next step is the LEDs. You'll need to wire up a chain of them. Uh, having them in parallel is best. This is going to run along the inside of the faceplate. I've got the power switch hidden along the side of the helmet, and there's a battery pack tucked away in the back. You definitely want to make sure that you have a resistor between them so that you're not burning everything out, but that's more on the electronics end of things. Uh, you're going to want the chain of lights to run from one side of the visor to the other with enough space so that they can all point into the very edges of the material pretty evenly. If you're using the compact lights that I'm putting in the description, it's not going to be as much of a challenge because those can more or less sit flush with the visor. You'll only need to do a small amount of divot into the side. Since I was using standard bulb LEDs, I sort of had to uh, dig a channel into the foam material so that I could insert them and have them facing inwards. One of the bigger challenges here is going to be making sure these LEDs are pointed as directly in as possible. Once everything is aligned, you can definitely see the effect working. You can also see how bright the LEDs are themselves, so I took some electrical tape strips to help mask that. It also really helps with keeping the alignment, and placing the pieces inside will also make sure that you're not blinding yourself every time you turn this thing on. You can also sync the visor into whatever material is surrounding it, uh, you just want to make sure that you're designing this in a way where you can actually assemble it or disassemble it if need be. Once I'm finished with the tape, you can see just how much it cuts down on that lens flare. When you're wearing this, the pattern is close enough to your eyes that it shouldn't ruin your visibility, and the glow is much less pronounced on the inside than the outside. It'll affect your night vision, you will be able to see it, but not nearly as much as you would expect. Now on to the topic of acrylic versus polycarbonate. This is a small sample of acrylic from a different attempt. You can already see how jagged it is from breaking. I'm taking a hammer to it, and that's what happens with a gentle blow. Now this is a piece of the polycarbonate from the visor. Same kind of situation, same hammer, and this is what happens. Yeah, so now I need a new hammer. I know most of you aren't likely to be hit in the face with a hammer while wearing your cosplays, um, but you know, just for reference, acrylic, if impacted with high forces, does break in a crystalline manner, while polycarb, you know, it's got some dents in there, a uh, few scratches on the outside, but you see what happened to the hammer when I tried to demonstrate this. If you're expecting to get hit in the face or actually plan to do super soldier things, then polycarb would be the choice for you. 